In this video, I'd like to discuss evaluating different function expressions. So this video is essentially a continuation from the last one where we evaluated functions from their graphs. But now we need to evaluate two different functions and then figure out what the expression would simplify to. So let me rewrite this. We have minus eight times f of one. So we need to figure that out. And then we have minus four times g of four. So we also need to figure that out. So let's start with f of one. So f is our blue curve. So we find an x value of one, because remember the number on the inside, that's our independent variable. That's always our x value or whatever your horizontal variable is. And so in this case, it's one. So we find an x value of one and we go to our blue curve right there. And it looks to have a y value of minus two. So f of one in this case would be negative two. Because remember this notation is essentially just asking us, given that x is one, or given that x is whatever's on the inside, what is the y value? And in this case, we found negative two. Now let's do the same thing, but with our g function here. So that's our purple function. So we find an x value of four, looks to be right here. We go up to that purple function. We see where it actually intersects that curve and it looks to have a y value of six. So when x is four and plugged into our, our function g, the dependent variable or the y value would be six in that case. So we're gonna replace g of four with six. So we have minus eight times minus two and then minus four times six. Notice that when I substituted negative two in for f of one, I put it in parentheses. I did the same thing for g of four, but it really matters when you're substituting a negative number in. That way you can avoid potential mistakes with your signs. So minus eight times minus two would be positive 16, and then minus four times six would be negative 24. So this function expression would simplify to minus eight. So minus eight, is what you'd put in the box there. Okay, let's try another one. So this one's very similar. Now we have f of minus three and g of minus seven that we need to simplify or that we need to evaluate. So we have minus six times f of minus three and then minus five times g of minus seven. So f of minus three, let's start with that one. So given that x is minus three, we can go down to our curve, the blue curve, because we're dealing with f, and we need its y value, which looks to be also minus three. So f of minus three is negative three, so we can substitute negative three in there. And then g of minus seven, so here's negative seven, now we gotta go up to our purple curve, because that's our g function, and that has a y value of six. So for our function g, it goes through the point minus seven for x and six for y. So we're gonna replace g of minus seven with positive six. So from here, we have minus six times minus three. Again, it's in parentheses to avoid mistakes with signs. And then minus five times six. If I didn't put parentheses here, it might look like minus six minus three. And you might put a dot here, maybe you don't, maybe you forget. But it's easy to misread this uh, notation or this way of rewriting the problem because you might read this as minus six minus three. Many students make that confusion. And so if you put it in parentheses, that helps remind you that you're multiplying these numbers rather than subtracting. So minus six times minus three would be positive 18. And then five times six is 30, which we're subtracting. And so our final answer would be negative 12. And so when we evaluate and simplify this expression for these functions, you get negative 12. And let's do another one. So this problem again is very similar. We have five times f of one. So we'll have to figure out what f of one is. And then plus five times g of nine. So we will also have to figure out what g of nine is. So let's go deal with our f function first. So that's the blue one. We need f of one right here. We go down to our curve and that looks like the point of one for x and minus five for our y value. So this would be minus five when we substitute. 
and g of 9, we'll find an x value of 9, and then go down to our curve here, it looks to be a y value of minus 6. So that point right there would be 9 comma minus 6, and we're going to replace this with negative 6. And so plugging those in, we get 5 times minus 5 plus 5 times minus 6. So this would be negative 25 minus 30 or negative 55. So when we evaluate this function expression, what we would actually put in the box would be minus 55. And let's do one more just for some extra practice. So we have 10 times f of 7 plus 9 times g of minus 1. And so we need to evaluate these two functions here. So f of 7, f is our blue curve. There's an x value of 7, so it looks like that point right there, which would be at 7 minus 1 for our y value. So right there. And then we also need g of minus 1. So that's negative 1 for our x value. Then we go up to our function, which looks to have a y value of 1. So this goes through at minus 1 comma 1. So when plugging these in, we get 10 times f of 7, which we know is negative 1, plus 9 times g of minus 1, which was positive 1. So you get minus 10 plus 9, which would be negative 1. So the number we actually put into the box here would be negative 1.